Hey everybody, this is the fourth here, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the circular panning law, what exactly it does, and whether it's best to have it on or off, um, or rather to use the circular or triangular panning law. So right now I have the panning law set to triangular, so what I show you right now is how panning and stereo kind of works without the circular panning a lot, kind of how it works. Uh, I want to say normally, but that's not the best word for it. Uh, but hopefully you understand what I mean. So you can see on this um, meter over here, level meter, if I play this hand clap, you can see it peaks uh, just below minus eight decibels. And if I pan it um, to either side, you will see that it still peaks at minus 8, so the level is not changed by panning it. Uh, and this is the case for the mixer as well. And you might be able to hear, you know, as this happens, it kind of appears to be less loud. Uh, when it's panned compared to when it's in the center. And this will be most noticeable on speakers, um, especially like laptop speakers, or if you're kind of further away from your speakers. Um, but it, it should be a bit noticeable. Um, even in headphones, I can kind of tell, but it's, it's a little bit weird because it's, you know, you're only hearing it in one ear. But hopefully you can hear that, it, you know, as I pan it, it does sound quieter the further it gets panned. And this is why the circular panning law was, uh, you know, created. You know, if you're automating the panning of something, you might not want it to be perceived as less loud when it goes to the side. You, know, you might want it to stay at a consistent apparent volume rather than getting louder in the center and softer on the sides. And so if I turn on the circular panning law, if I change the panning law to circular, uh, you should hear that this kind of corrects the problem. You know, as I pan, it will appear to be at a consistent volume whether it's in the sides or in the center, um, you know, anywhere along the panning automation. You know, um, compare that to the triangular panning law again. And hopefully you can tell that, you know, the volume definitely sounds much more consistent. Um, to me, it sounds like it is the same level wherever it's panned. With the panning law set to circular. And so the way this works is when a sound is panned, it applies a bit of gain to the channel that it is panned to. So before uh, remember, it was at minus 8, and when I panned it, it stayed at minus 8. But now when I pan it, you know, it adds 3 decibels when it's hard panned, uh, so that it's at minus 5. And then there's kind of a curve that it applies to the gain as you pan it. Um, but when it is hard panned, it's a three decibel gain that it adds. And so that's really all the circular panning law does. You know, it adds a bit of a gain when you pan a sound either direction. And so whether you leave it on or off is up to you, but it really only matters when you're, you know, automating the panning. Because if you're not automating the panning, you know, it's going to add some gain if you pan it. But, you know, you can always adjust that later on, um, as you should while you're mixing. 
Yeah, so it, it really only matters when you're automating the panning of something. And my personal recommendation is to leave it on, leave the circular panning law on, because it is, it is a nice effect. You know, I like things to be a uh, consistent volume when I pan them, uh, if I'm automating the panning. And also, it's kind of a difficult effect to recreate. You know, so if you have the circular panning law off, but you decide for a certain sound that you want it on, you could turn it on, but it might mess up your whole mix if you have things panned and set at certain levels. Uh, and it's just, you know, it, it's difficult to recreate kind of manually. But if you have it on, as I do now, it's easy in FL Studio to pan things with that off. And all you, all you have to do is add a panomatic. And you'll see if I pan with the panomatic, you know, it stays at minus eight decibels. So that's why I recommend you leave it on, uh, because, you know, if that gain is ever a problem and you're automating the panning of a sound, then there's a really easy workaround to disable it for that particular sound. Whereas, you know, if you do the other way around, it's not as easy to implement the circular panning law for a specific sound. So that's pretty much it for this video. You know, hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that answered any questions or resolved any confusion you, you might have had about the circular panning law. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.